Welcome to Smash Fiction, the podcast where we pit two or more nerd icons against one another in a battle of strength or wits or coolness. Get it? Ah. Uh, ah. Uh. And see who would win. Ooh. This week, Iceman versus the Ice King versus Sub Zero versus Elsa. Despite the best efforts of his daughter Lyra, Lord Azrael has completed his first goal, using highly scientific methods like soul energy and child sacrifice, he has blown open a <laughs> hole between worlds. Azrael can go to war with God if he wants to, but you don't just explode a door through the fabric of reality without incurring a few side effects, namely, a few other doors opening in a few other worlds. And as it happens, four people from those other worlds have stumbled through those doors and found themselves on the frigid island of Svalbard. People who include the always portrayed as young, even though he's been around since like the 60s, mutant superhero Bobby Drake, AKA Iceman, the crown sporting, princess stealing, only sort of tragic villain, Simon Petrikov, AKA the Ice King, the part man, part cryomancer, occasional cyborg, and all badass Kwai Lang, AKA Sub-Zero, and the one and only mistress of the art of letting go and turning everything into a frozen paradise slash wasteland, Queen Elsa of Arendelle. No sooner have these conveniently ice-themed individuals arrived, however, than they are set upon and, in their disoriented state, captured by Svalbard's resident ruling class, the Panzerbjorn, aka the civilization of armored talking bears led by their newly reinstated king, Yorick Bernison. Bow down. King Yorick has a problem. The hole between worlds created by that douchebag Asriel is screwing with the environment of Svalbard, just as Al Gore predicted. The ice is melting, the seals are leaving, and the whole place is about to become uninhabitable. He plans to lead his bears to another world where they might thrive once more, but he has no idea what dangers they might encounter on the way, or even if they will find an appropriately tundra-esque place to live. However, he has noticed that all four of his new captives seem to possess supernatural abilities to create or manipulate snow and ice, which could be quite useful in the quest to come or quite perilous if they decided to work together against the bears. After giving it some careful ursine thought, Yorek reaches a decision. In keeping with bear custom, Iceman, Sub-Zero, the Ice King, and Queen Elsa will do battle in gladiatorial combat, with the winner earning a position of great power and respect as Yorek's general in the journey to another world. As for the losers, well, they'll serve their purpose on the quest too, though in their case, it will likely be in the form of jerky. It should be noted that Yorek is not necessarily looking for the strongest warrior. He is looking for the person with the greatest command of their powers who could help him the most, as well as the person who can win the most loyalty from the bears. Creativity and crowd support are as important, if not more important, than superiority in combat. Which commander of the cold, which four striper of the forces of freezing fury, will earn a place at Yorick's right hand and avoid being salted and dried for later food rationing? I have no idea. That's why I, Miles Schneiderman, am your alliterative judge tonight. <laughs> Representing Iceman is Dan Mulcairin. All right, everyone. Chill. <laughs> Wait. Dan, you know it's Iceman, right? <laughs> yeah, I know. I know. <laughs> Just making sure. Representing the Ice King is Colin Mulcairin. You are not sending me to the cooler. Representing Sub-Zero is Liz Logan. Allow me to break the ice. I miss the Sub-Zero. <laughs> <sighs> and representing Elsa is Kit Mulcairin. Let's kick some ice. <laughs> we may have collaborated before the show started, Miles. <laughs> Maybe a little bit. Back Maybe a little cooler. bit. <laughs> Although, wouldn't it be great if we didn't? <laughs> that would be great. You should have just left that a mystery. You decide, <laughs> listeners. Do these people know each other of old? The three of them have the same last name. Um, okay. To determine who goes first, I asked each advocate to demonstrate an awesome ice-related science experiment. Liz showed up with a vinegar and baking soda volcano, which is both cliched and kind of the opposite of ice-related. Kit used salt and pieces of string to go fishing for ice cubes, which is fun, but 
kind of simple. Then use dry ice to make a sweet ass cloud and all that shit. But it was Colin yeah. who busted out the liquid nitrogen and started breaking shit in awesome fashion. So he'll be going first. I was going to say it's always cool, and I wasn't even trying a pun. I really wasn't. Uh-huh. <laughs> I had to stop myself. <laughs> Never stop. All right, Colin. Do ice uh, <laughs> oh, boy. It's going to be one of those episodes. Ice King, take it away. The Ice King may be stupid, petty, forgetful, jealous, angry, greedy, obsessive, depressed, out of shape, elderly, lazy, desperate for any scraps of attention he can get from women, and completely insane, but he is also an absurdly powerful magical entity, easily the equal of any of his competitors in terms of sheer magical mojo, even though he may be on the weaker end when it comes to pretty much everything else. Let's start with his mastery over the cold. The Ice King's powers are specific and focused enough to secretly freeze a cup of hot chocolate on the other side of a room into a solid block of ice without anyone noticing, and also powerful and far-reaching enough to instantly summon up a vast legion of snow warriors at a moment's notice that will only sometimes attack him instead of his intended targets. <laughs> uh, in the episode Mortal Recoil, when Princess Bubblegum is possessed by the Lich and transformed into a giant bubblegum kaiju monster that towers over all the buildings in the Candy Kingdom, with a wave of his hands, the Ice King freezes her solid. She is then knocked over and shatters when she hits the ground. One of the Ice King's favorite abilities is his power to instantly conjure up restraint in the form of of solid blocks of ice around the hands and feet of his targets, which will mean that characters like Elsa and Sub-Zero that have to gesture in order to use their powers will be stopped cold in their tracks. Sorry, that was my only one. Um, <laughs> in the episode Frost and Fire, when he is having a magical DBZ-style fight with the Flame Princess, speedily flying all over the sky and trading magical attacks with her, the Ice King animates an entire mountain made of ice and transforms it into a magical giant mech suit, which he then hops in and pilots. I'll admit, the Ice King's powers don't seem to be that good sometimes, he is easily defeated by Finn and Jake a decent portion of the time, but that's because the Ice King doesn't use reason to command his powers, which is a good thing because he doesn't have any of that. The source of the Ice King's power is his rage. When the Ice King gets really mad, he quickly goes from a jokey comic relief type villain to a genuinely threatening top tier supervillain. And man, can his emotions turn quickly. When Finn pissed him off one time, he said to the boy, I'll cleave the warmth from your bones and stop your beating heart with my claws. When he feels as though he's being left out of the secret tape viewing party in the episode Holly Jolly Secrets, the Ice King's rage seemingly inadvertently summons a blizzard that darkens the skies and covers the ground in at least 10 or 15 feet of snow stretching beyond the horizon in all directions. And this happens pretty much instantly. That's the other thing about the Ice King's powers that make them really scary. Everything he does, whether it's summon a giant blizzard or a giant ice monster or an aforementioned semi-loyal legion of snow warriors, it always happens immediately as soon as he wants it to. No long sequence of gestures or incantations, no entering in a long sequence of button commands in the right order, or any fancy CGI dance numbers. He just froze his brow, flash of light, and boom, everything around him for miles in all directions freezes instantly. It might be due to time constraints and budget constraints of Adventure Time that his powers work this way, but who cares? A win is a win, and I'll take him where I can get him. Ice King has a whole bunch of other stuff. He has his prehensile beard, which is a melee weapon that also lets him fly. He's a master of frigitsu. I have a Dan list of like 95 different frigitsu <laughs> techniques, but I won't do them during because of time. Like, start of frozen rain and ginormo grow ice lightning etc there's like there's so many i can't even tell you he has wizard eyes which lets him see into the spirit world for all those naysayers that claim that their character will be immune to ice-based attacks he can also shoot blue magical eldritch attacks he's also pretty good at the drums and he has a bunch of cool <laughs> devices like his magic engagement ring that allows him to control the minds of whoever puts it on so maybe somebody beats him up searches him says oh cool a magic ring puts it on he mind controls them he has his ghost pouch which contains one or more ghosts presumably and the most busted artifact is possession is his magical demonic wishing eye. We don't really know how it works, but in one episode where Gunter puts it on, his penguin, it summons up a seemingly endless horde of copies of himself, like hundreds and hundreds of penguins that all have the ability to duplicate the attributes and attacks of whoever they're fighting. And yeah, we don't really know how the demonic wishing eye works, but the Ice King has it, and it does crazy shit. Uh, but the final advantage right. the Ice King has over his competitors is how totally non-threatening he is. Uh, okay, can I... Hurry, hurry up. Okay, sorry, sorry. But the final major advantage the Ice King has over his competitors is how totally non-threatening he is. He has literally the voice of an older, raspier SpongeBob SquarePants. Anyone who hears him speaking for, let's go with about four words, will be able to tell that this guy is, in the words of Raphael Medina, a total goober. While the other combatants are busy fighting each other, they will be totally ignoring the sad old Ice King, whose initially shitty powers won't be doing much against them. After a while, once everyone has been fighting each other for a while, tiring each other out, he will be so tired of being ignored by them that he will erupt in a fit of frozen, magical rage, and his powers will go from non-existent to cosmically all-powerful, and he will consume and destroy all of his admittedly more competent competitors. And then Elsa will say, Ice King! 
King is the hottest hottie and I can't wait to marry him. And then she will turn to Sub-Zero and Iceman and say, I hope the Ice King will sweep me off my feet and okay. take me to the farthest corner of Ooh, <laughs> where we will do nothing I'm but kiss and this a whole now. Bunch until we get <laughs> fat and die. The end. Enough. Come on, I didn't realize you were that dude from the Micro Machines ad. <laughs> Seriously. That was terrifying. I had, I had so much stuff. I didn't even do all <laughs> yeah. of it. I'm sorry. Did you now? Did you I now? love the things. All right, Dan, I hope your presentation has lots of teen angst from, like, every decade. And lists. Yes! And yes! lists. <laughs> Iceman, go. I feel like I kind of owe you guys an apology. You're really, really outclassed in this match. If you've seen the movies or the various animated X series or played some of the video games, you might think you know Iceman. He's like the Human Torch, but with ice. But no, in a team of heroes with crazy powers... Bobby Drake stands head and shoulders above almost all of them. Iceman can do a trick that's not only unique to him, but utterly defies physics and conservation of matter and stuff. He can turn his body to ice. Not just cover it in ice, but turn it to ice, meaning he can also reshape his body as necessary, making himself larger or smaller, or with different proportions, or covered in spikes. He can also increase his mass and strength by absorbing ice into himself, which means that any ice-based attacks that come his way in this fight will only make him stronger. He can also transform himself into any form of water, even liquid water or water vapor. He can even teleport by jumping into a body of water like a lake or a river, merging with the water, and then reconstituting himself any Anywhere along that same body of water. Bobby can not only freeze objects and enemies, he can create objects out of ice, from baseball bats and shields to intricate and realistic ice sculptures and miniature cities, and he can dissolve these constructs with a thought. He's basically Green Lantern with ice. He's even able to create duplicates of himself which he can control at a distance, essentially meaning that he can make an entire army of ice men. As an Omega level mutant, the scope of Iceman's powers are just staggering. Writer Mike Carey once said that Iceman's powers could, quote, influence the ecosystem of the entire world. At one point, he loses control of his mind and almost freezes the Earth. Loki, a freaking frost giant slash Norse god, once tried to steal Iceman's powers because he knew that those powers were greater than his. Not only that, he can also heal himself. There's a point when Mystique injects him with a lethal toxin and he's able to completely purge it from his system. He was basically decapitated once in that Azazel shattered his body and only his head was left and he was fine. There have been comics, ladies and gentlemen. There have been several occasions where Iceman was completely destroyed and just pulled himself back together. No amount of Lin Kuei martial arts from Sub Zero or fake lightning from the Ice King will defeat Iceman. He'll just keep on coming. If you've been paying attention so far, you've realized that Iceman has all the powers of Storm, Nightcrawler, Colossus, Wolverine, one half of the Wonder <laughs> Twins, and Jamie Madrox put together and magnified. He's like the X-Men's version of Captain Planet. So, obviously, I feel confident that if all three of the other combatants in today's match decided to team up against Iceman, Iceman would still very handily walk away with a victory. But this isn't just about fighting. It's about convincing the Panzerbjorn that they can turn to you in this new scary world. Now, Iceman has had to help a society facing collapse before. When the Skrulls launched their secret invasion of Earth, Bobby took up the burden of providing water to the people of Utopia and managed to keep their spirits up with his optimism and humor as well. At one point, Iceman was in charge of protecting the mutant Cecilia Reyes. He not only had to single-handedly defend her from a group of Sentinels, he then had to make a DC-40 diplomacy check to basically talk Cecilia off of a pretty intense metaphorical ledge, all of which he did. In case you missed that drink yes, and also wrap up, Dan. <laughs> <laughs> That's the thing about Iceman. In the original X-Men, he was known as the class clown who never took anything seriously. But Iceman, better than anyone else here, knows the value of hope, the value of taking the time to laugh. When you do this, you remember what you're fighting for and why you're working so hard to keep your society together. Iceman isn't just the most powerful choice. He's the one who will help the Panzerbjorn to flourish. Okay. Kit, uh, let it go. <laughs> let it go, let it go. Thank you, Liz. Though an intimidating premise for the young queen, Elsa realizes helping the Panzerbjorn may in fact be her life's true calling. She forces her worried expression from her face, steps into the arena with false confidence, and wills Snow to begin falling over the arena and the audience. At first, it falls at a slow, calming pace, as soft and beautiful as Elsa's very own expression as she looks upon the crowd. But with a brisk turn of her head, she rests a now cold gaze upon her opponents, and the snow she summoned reacts in kind. 
Gusts carry sheets of ice to blind her opponents, mainly the Ice King and Sub-Zero. The Ice King screams foul play as he struggles to get the ice out of his eyes. After he rubs the last bits of offending ice away, he pauses mid-rant upon realizing the wall of snow that has appeared before him. Slowly looking up, he discovers that it is in fact Elsa's large, animate snow creature named Marshmallow. He barely has time to finish some <laughs> quotable one-liner before Marshmallow punches him out of the arena. With a brutish grunt, Marshmallow turns to face Sub-Zero, only to find an ice sculpture that looks a lot like a ninja. <laughs> Sub-Zero, already behind the large snowman, begins to pummel it, though struggles to dispatch a creature that has no bones or organs for him to rip out and destroy in a completely over-the-top fashion. This distraction allows Elsa all the time she needs to fling her spray of icy bolts into the ninja's heart. He may stumble and stagger as he tries to resist his fate, but as we've seen in matches where both players pick Sub-Zero, his greatest weakness in this match is that he is not resistant to being frozen. No act of true love will come to <laughs> save Sub-Zero as he turns to solid ice. By this point, the Panzerbjorn audience is roaring in approval of the Ice Queen. Elsa turns her blue eyes to the crowd and smiles confidently, though her moment of pride quickly shatters as a hush falls over the audience. Following their gaze, Elsa turns to see Iceman, or rather, Ice Men. Bobby Drake, in his translucent organic ice form, stands confidently at the center of the arena in front of rows upon rows of his own ice clones. He suggests that she surrender, making his heroic nature apparent. Elsa clenches her fists and takes a deep breath of the cold air. With a voice powerful enough to pass through a snowstorm and be heard by all, she replies, I can't. This is where I belong. Releasing her fists, row upon row of large snow creatures appear behind her, but all of these have the head of Olaf. The army of obnoxiously optimistic snowmen charge at Iceman's army, allowing Elsa to fall back into the storm. Bobby searches for the Ice Queen in the cave. There was a fire fight! <laughs> it was an ice fight, actually. That was the, that was the joke? I'm sorry. Go home. <laughs> Bobby searches for the Ice Queen of the Chaos, but struggles to find her through the growing blizzard. Within a small fort of ice and snow that Elsa has encased herself, she worries and wonders how to defeat a foe that can turn into ice and seemingly match her own ability to bring the worst of winter. She fears she can't win and will never see Anna again. And that's when she remembers the key to controlling her power. Love. Elsa realizes that throughout oh. this fight, <laughs> yeah, love is going to win the day. It won't work, kitty's gay. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Elsa realizes that throughout this fight, she had totally fought for herself. And though she has great power, love is the key to controlling that power. Summoning up the love her sister inspires, Elsa will selflessly fight for the Panzerbjorn, but there will be no more death today. Moving background music swells as a wave of sparkly magic radiates out from Elsa, eliminating all the snow and ice it passes through. The clashing ice armies disappear, and as Iceman readies an attack against the exposed Ice Queen, the magic washes over him, leaving him flesh and bone again. Bobby panics as he tries and fails to summon his ice, but it seems, at least for now, that his ice manipulation has gone. All of the ice is gone, except for Sub-Zero. No one here loves him. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Elsa straightens her posture and speaks in a tone fitting a queen. I will help these people. And that's that was like okay. the classiest argument ever. <laughs> yeah, seriously. <laughs> I stayed until one in the morning writing it. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Well, I'm I'm ready to uh, declassify this uh, classiness. <laughs> I was gonna say props for that, Liz. Drag us back into the mud. <laughs> All right, so we're talking about ice and cold winter and shit, right? So water freezes at zero degrees Celsius, thirty-two degrees Fahrenheit. Our combatants are two guys with ice in their name and some crazy hermit lady. But one combatant <laughs> is literally colder than the freezing point, and therefore a bunch times more deadly because ice. Yeah, Sub Zero, also known as Quiet. Science. If temperature has anything to do with this battle, Sub-Zero wins by default. Being one with ice and killing is in his icy cold blood. Ice. His dad... <laughs> his dad was a cryomancer and he was trained to be an assassin as a child. Ice. Liz, I feel like you, you did a really weird find and replace with a period and just replaced it with ice. <laughs> that or you're getting like an old-fashioned telegram, but instead of saying stop, it says ice. <laughs> <clears throat> so not only is he an ice wizard, he's a cold and calculating master martial artist, assassin, thief who is trusted with an artifact that can release a god, and has the ability to fend against and fight against said gods, ice. He fights tons of skilled fighters constantly, including martial artists and demon necromancers. Sub-Zero has experience fighting against experienced users, wielders, icers of ice, which will be extremely useful in this fight. 
the others in this battle haven't really been up against another opponent who has such a uh, mastery of uh, ice. Take, for example, his apprentice Frost, a skilled icer. I'm going to keep saying icer. She became a bit of a maniac, and Sub-Zero was able to defeat and flash freeze her twice. Plus, you may be thinking, oh, well, didn't she freeze him once? Well, yeah, you know, he, he was caught off guard when he thought she was still his adorable little youngling Padawan. So it shows that his power of flash freeze will work on other ice users. I mean, even when this guy is killed, he comes back as an even stronger cyborg. And then when he's killed as a cyborg, he gets resurrected again. And then he eventually becomes the Grandmaster of the Lin Kuei. Plus, think about it. If anyone has amazing martial leadership and can lead the Panzer Bears into battle or whatever, it's Sub-Zero. I mean, when he takes off his mask in uh, Mortal Kombat 10, he's got this huge beard. I mean, he's built like a bear. You know, Iceman's humor is going to be lost on uh, the Ursine way of thinking. But Sub-Zero, Sub-Zero is going to look like, like, yeah, like, I think that guy's part bear. Yeah, I know, right? Yeah, let's follow him. So it, it'll work out fine. And I mean, this is a crazy old, well-known assassin clan. He's got the experience leading people into battle. You know, he appears in every Mortal Kombat game. He doesn't get tired. And his powers of ice are always getting more powerful as the ever-growing ice sheet on his arms show. Speaking of those ice powers, he is able to flash freeze opponents whole, blast them with an ice ball, slide and maneuver quickly using ice on his shoes, trip others up using slippery ground ice, or knock them up, create an ice hammer, an ice barrier, cover himself in armored ice, shower them in ice, ice teleport, an unblockable ice nugget, he can create an ice grenade that flash freezes a victim, and can create beautiful ice sculptures of himself to distract opponents. Ice, 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 bitch. Thank goodness he can turn into a liquid state as well, and, you know, since none of the other combatants have control of anything else but ice, he'll just evaporate, go right under their legs, reform into a solid-state ice sculpture, and punch them right in the balls. Basically, he will rip out your entrails, eat them like a popsicle, use your frozen body as a skateboard, rip your head off, or any other body part, and then use that a weapon against your frozen body, too. If there were ever a combatant that was made to win this episode and this podcast in general, it's Sub-Zero. Okay. Ice, indeed. Strong opening arguments from all four competitors. Uh, let's move into rebuttals. Everybody will have a brief amount of time to make an argument against Ice King. Colin will have a chance to respond, and then we will move on to Iceman and so on and so forth. So, prepare to attack that asshole and get that stupid crown off his head. So, the Ice King is not only arguably the weakest character here, but I'd argue that he has the least ability to lead people and rule over people or just plain get people to like him. And in fact, I'm seeing him be introduced to the bear royal family. He starts making eyes at the bear princess and then one botched kidnapping later is running for his life away from an army of armored bears. Well, I mean, he has already shown that he is currently the king of a vast Antarctic kingdom of penguins. So I think in terms of <laughs> leading a kingdom full of, you know, animals that inhabit the cold, I think he has a leg up on everybody else in this competition. Uh, Colin, guess what polar bears eat? <laughs> <laughs> I know, so he'll have plenty of food for them. Polar bears say, don't eat I can penguins. Take you, I can take you to a magical oh, right. land. Polar bears live in the Arctic, you animal freak. Oh, yeah, you're right. Oh. I'm thinking of seals. <laughs> I'm thinking of another very cute animal. <laughs> but oh, I'm sure God. they would eat penguins. Oh, and I mean, the, the Ice King can, can take them. <laughs> <laughs> the Ice King can say, I can take you to a magical land where you'll have all these penguins to feed on and it'll be great. <laughs> and I mean, yeah, it's, it's true that he may not be the best leader. I will agree. But I think that if he manages to, say, kill all of his competitors, then they'll be stuck with him. Ask your comment about Elsa needing to gesture. There is a scene in Frozen where her hands are completely shackled, and yes, she at first doesn't seem to be able to escape, but she does manage to escape thanks to her orb spiky ice magic growing throughout the cell. I argue that her gesturing is merely a focus, not the key to her power. I piggyback on that point. Thank you! For Sub-Zero? For Sub-Zero. gesturing. <laughs> 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 Unfortunately for him, the source of his power, his crown, will also be the reason for his defeat. Though he maybe has the power to rival Elsa, the crown has laid ruin to his sanity, and not in a scary way either. He's just incredibly incompetent, gullible, and regularly gets his ass handed to him by a weird boy and his even weirder dog when he seems to forget how powerful he is, which is very often. He's crazy, I agree. 
sometimes it's not good, but sometimes it is, and he gets the rage stuff and the killing people that I mentioned where he makes all the ice come down. But yeah, but as I mentioned, I think that his insanity is often just kind of charming when you don't know him that well. And I think when people first meet him, they'll just say, oh, there's this old kook. Uh, I'll deal with him later. First, let's fight the guy summoning the ice armies and the scary, like, you know, ripped, roided out ninja guy, you know. <laughs> Who's gonna impress the bears? I mean, <laughs> <laughs> the bears are gonna be like, look how ripped that guy is. <laughs> yeah. If he was gay, he actually would be called a bear. So there you go. <laughs> Sub Zero is now gay and he's a bear. I didn't know he was hairy. Yeah, go look at him. <laughs> no, I'm good. The Ice King would rather eat out his sorrows than duke it out with a bunch of other ice people. No one really considers him a threat. And I feel like this entire fight, he's going to be trying to court Elsa for her love, which she'll naturally rebuff since he has the social skills of an icy old man. <laughs> I agree with all of this. <laughs> <laughs> no, as I've said, this is this is his... It's not his strategy because he's not doing it on purpose, but it will work in his favor um, that he will just kind of float around in the background and be like, while like, you know, Iceman and Sub-Zero are fighting, he's going to like float up behind them, flapping his beard and be like, hey guys, what are you doing? What's going on? And they're like, oh, we're fighting. Go away. And he's like, oh, do you, you want to like hang out? And they'll be like, no, we're fighting. He's just like, oh, okay. And then like, you know, everybody's going to get all tired and he's just going to be like hanging out, like talking to the polar bears. And then eventually when everybody gets all tired and he's, he'll get tired of people ignoring them and he'll you know do crazy magic things i'm gonna give okay. him one of my unblockable ice nuggets right down his throat i hate to break up this conversation but look immunity <laughs> kill it <laughs> that's racist uh, you just alienated that audience <laughs> yeah you just alienated them <laughs> the audience. demographic um we'll check them off the list i guess <laughs> In regards to Iceman, when he uses his abilities, it's been compared to using a muscle. And just like using a muscle, his powers can eventually get tired. And now this takes a long time, admittedly, and usually in most of his fights, he can win them before he gets too tired for his powers to stop working. But when he's fighting a bunch of other people that can bend and shape all of his powers, and some who are also, like, immune to his powers, like Elsa, who, in her own words, you know, the cold never bothered her anyway. Oh, um, I, say that. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like, well, this is what happens when I go first i get the better quotes um eventually his ice muscle will get tired of flexing and his powers will stop working also if he ever does get shattered you're right he can reconstitute himself but it's shown that it's severely taxing and he ends up super tired and not able to like really use his powers after he reconstitutes himself that may be the case but the truth of the matter is he can absorb ice into himself to make himself stronger so the more you guys try to fight against him the stronger he's going to get. He's the only one here who could very well end this fight stronger than when he started. Unless Elsa magics it all away. With her love. Is that your, your argument? That's Kit? all I got against you, you fucking cheater, cheater, <laughs> cheater. Said your shit is so bullshit. But magic is the greatest bullshit of all. All right, let's take this to its logical conclusion then. So Elsa uses her power to banish all ice from the arena, except for that which is freezing Sub-Zero, <laughs> as we've established. <laughs> so what then is left? So there's an old man who can't use ice magic. There's Elsa who can't use ice magic. And there's Iceman <laughs> who's an X-Man who has trained in the danger room since he was a teenager. Like... Of those three, who do you think is going to come out of this fight on top? No, she the me. one who's still a wizard and still has a whole bunch of other non-ice related magic? Like a demonic wish. No, you're already, and you're already punched out of the arena. Colin, you'll, <laughs> you and Colin you'll be lucky back. if you last the first round. <laughs> you're, you're in an arena, hon. If you're just going to sit there and be incompetent, you're going to get punched out real quick. Oh, no. Ice no one, you're not going to pull a, a Malus and try to sneak out of this. Right? <laughs> oh, I totally am. I'm turning this logic against you. Don't mind me in my hey, bear suit in the court. you took that all win right. away from all right, me. All right. Iceman is basically me light. Sub Zero Light. They all have the same, you know, similar controls over ice. They both fought crazy enemies, blah, blah, blah. Except Sub Zero has been immersed in martial arts training since he was a child. And Colin's right. You know, the second Sub Zero, I keep wanting to say, second I uh, shatter <laughs> Iceman, but the second Sub Zero shatters Iceman, he's going to have to put on some sweet mute music and asexually reproduce himself, which is going to take forever. Let me just quote from the wikia that I read on Bobby Drake that was absolutely hilarious. Quote, Bobby is a certified practicing accountant, a skilled ice skater, and can speak Spanish fluently, end quote. 
<laughs> uh, oh, and he is a fair hand-to-hand -hand combatant. Do I really need to revisit my previous statement that Sub-Zero is a grandmaster of a martial arts clan? That he can rip out your spine? Okay, Iceman has to rely on his ice to win a fight. Sub-Zero doesn't. He can take on Iceman, even with Iceman in his form. I mean, how many times have we seen martial arts masters break through, you know, shit tons of cinder blocks? Bobby Drake's ice? <laughs> okay, so... If I can respond to what you just said, and I will try to make it not as a five-paragraph essay. Okay, <laughs> point number one. Sub-Zero has to get within arm's reach to hit Iceman. That means not getting frozen by Iceman in the process, which Sub-Zero is especially vulnerable to, as Kit pointed out. Point two, if Sub-Zero does break Iceman, then Iceman can regenerate. Yes, it's tiring, but Iceman is literally the only combatant here for whom that is an option. Point three, Sub-Zero is very good at fighting, well, not very good. He has about a 50-50 shot of beating someone in hand-to-hand -hand combat, if Mortal Kombat is any indicator. He's not as trained at fighting an army of Icemen, which is another trick that Iceman can pull out of his pocket and use here. There is no way Sub-Zero takes down Iceman. There's no way. Except for when he uses the screen covering ice shower, or when he decides to block you with his ice armor shield, which when you hits it, automatically flash freezes you, which we know Sub-Zero is able to flash freeze other users of ice. Yeah, it's just for Iceman who can absorb it. Let the record show that Liz said, when you hits it. All right. Come on, come on. Elsa, prepare to defend yourself with the power of love. Oh, Elsa. If I wanted to play or dance in a winter wonderland, you are the first character I dial on my ice phone. We could throw snowballs, make pretty ice castles, watch you crumble <laughs> under your psychological and internal struggle, watch you <laughs> banish yourself someplace remote, watch you abandon the one thing that is able to control your powers. Yeah, it'd be a great time. It'd be an ice time. All Sub-Zero would have to do is sneak in, which, hint hint, he's an assassin, would be really good at that, kidnap Anna, 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 bitch and watch elsa go absolutely haywire anna's love is the only way elsa can control her powers take that away and elsa will turn into an immovable ice cube who won't want her to fly plus call her a cold-hearted bitch or a frozen ice queen and she'll get upset and run away come on she's more likely to hurt herself than want to hurt anyone else anna's not gonna be anywhere near this arena dude she is inextricably tied to elsa's powers you even <laughs> said it in your argument i did but she's not gonna be anywhere near this arena so oh she totally will and if she's not then elsa will just totally be a wreck then you can she doesn't even have her someone. biggest support system you can still love someone even though they're like across the world no not not for uh ice queen i don't bitch. know she's a bitch she's a frozen bitch okay now, now we're just getting into I like ad hominem chill? attacks on her personality <laughs> Okay, so, I, have a, I, have a, I mean, I don't really, that's no, that, that was my response to that. I do have, like, an additional comment about, like, Elsa's power. Judge, power of crying. Judge, if you'll allow it. Right. Icy uh, tears. She doesn't seem to control ice so much as controls the very aspect of winter. When she finally undoes all of her ice at the end of Frozen, we see that all the grass and plants and shit are alive. If her powers worked scientifically, like Iceman supposedly do... <laughs> Um, everything would have died and stayed dead after she covered her country in snow in the middle of summer. She would have wrecked that ecosystem. I'm just further stating, magic, the greatest bullshit of all. <laughs> the EPA hates her. <laughs> no, they don't, because everything came back to life. It's great. A greater power than love is creep, as we all know. Oh, no. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> oh, no. <it's> <laughs> Elsa is a nice, misunderstood princess. She's not a fighter. She's not a killer. When threatened, she runs away. When she gets emotional, her powers are really hard to control. And the only people she's, like, fought in, like, I fought in, like, the loosest sense is, like, those guys with, like, spears that, like, go, bah, and, like, try to attack her castle and, like, ah. But she's not actually fought, like, other magical, powerful beings. So I really don't think that she is has, like, the sort of killer instinct or knows how to use her powers for maximum combat effectiveness the way that the other three competitors do. She totally has killer instinct. She would have killed Wesselton's two bodyguards if Hans hadn't come in the exact oh, same way. Oh, bodyguards? <laughs> she could kill, like, basically people that would die in, like, one hit in any video game? Oh, no. <laughs> Dude, like, your character is a glass jaw. Like, a boy punches him and he's out. <laughs> All right, is a okay. mighty hero who wields the, the magic sword of the Enchiridion. Here's the thing. Elsa's ice monsters are not super great at actually protecting her. When Hans takes a bunch of men up to Elsa's castle, the giant ice golem she creates manages to keep everyone out 
except for the two dudes who are actually interested in killing Elsa. That is not a great track record for Marshmallow. She can make more now. You know, she learned from her mistakes. Who will also let actual killers buy. And they're going to be Olaf Marshmallows. <laughs> and then you know how obnoxious and in your face those ones are going to be. Why doesn't she just create a, a snowman version of Jar Jar Binks while she's at it? <laughs> All right. You asked for it. <laughs> Shit. It's all Disney now. <laughs> okay, no, no, no. And on that note, everybody come at Sub Zero like one at a time, like you're a stupid gang of ninjas. <laughs> wait, 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 wait. You're all frozen. You can't. <laughs> oh. oh, no, you just made me stronger. Look at that. Oh, all right. look, it never bothered me. <laughs> it probably bothered me. All right, so. <laughs> <laughs> a lot of things bother me. Do you want to hear about them? <laughs> So not only is Sub-Zero capable of being frozen, Sub-Zero is the only person here who can accidentally freeze himself. If he performs the ice clone move two times in a row, he ends up frozen. I mean, he's just not that impressive. He can accidentally freeze himself. It's Are not... you trying to say I'm bad at video games? Because I don't appreciate that. <laughs> <laughs> I would never make a rookie mistake, Dan. So shut up. Move on. You know, spammer. I was going to say, Liz, is that your only response to that? I mean, that okay. that's a totally player-dependent choice, and I would not play... Sub-Zero, like a noob. <laughs> Fair enough, Colin. Sub-Zero has been killed before by people like Scorpion. And like we said, he loses about half the fights against the other combatants. Now, these are other skilled combatants and stuff, but, I mean, he gets regularly defeated by mortals, you know, just other random people. And yeah, his ice powers are lame and the weakest out of everyone here. No way. He has hundreds of moves that he can do that utilize ice. I mean, crazy ice things. Like... Think of any natural disaster and then replace it with, like, some kind of ice effect. Yeah, that's Sub-Zero's powers. You know, he's learned from all of his experiences. I mean, you know, we were talking about you know, Cyborg. He kind of became a cyborg, and then he kind of got resurrected, like, blah, blah, blah. At this point, like, he's he, he knows what's up. And he's been through some shit. And he has fought way more people other than mortals. And he's fought the demons. He's fought the necromancers, magic users, wizards. Like I said, Dude. other ice users. He has tons of experience. Do I need to list off all of my ice techniques? Frigitsu, I'll start doing list. it until somebody <laughs> cuts me off. Nunchucks, daggers of chilled glass, <laughs> stars of frozen spine rain, rip, overhead ice, 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 ice kunai, frosty, ice will kick, force of blizzard, uh, flying throw. jump, caltropic uh, storm, <laughs> fake I'll jakes. I'll disqualify both of you. <laughs> you know, you can know the names of attacks and still be shitty. <laughs> <laughs> Kit, anything to say to Sub Zero? Um, only that, like. We're entering this arena knowing that those other three people in the arena are the ones to beat. Sub-Zero's gonna have a really hard time ninjing up to anyone. And Elsa's oh. quite good at, like, reflexively defending herself with, like, her little icy spears and stuff. Yeah, but Sub-Zero, not only does he have a host of offensive options, he's got tons of defensive options. Plus, a lot of his attacks are completely unblockable. And if we're going to talk about the ice clones, if you do it twice, you get frozen yourself. Well, then when a move list tells me that a move is unblockable it's fucking unblockable so those ice nuggets yeah those are unblockable you're gonna get frozen except it doesn't bother her anyway but it will because <laughs> okay. it's unblockable but I mean, okay. she's, she's gonna get a mouthful of ice and she's gonna be like ah <laughs> like, mm. hey, you guys know what else is unblockable no. what's that lightning oh, oh. not again <laughs> yeah Why? it's time for the lightning round y'all choosing one general out of these four ultimately proves impossible. And with the full-fledged support of the bears, Yorick reluctantly decides to take all of them onto the journey into the other world. Together, Iceman, Sub-Zero, Elsa, and the Ice King lead the bears of Svalbard through the rip in the universe and into a brave new... desert? This isn't good. There's also something strange about this community. It just doesn't feel right. As the suddenly out-of-place ice people slash bears walk down the kind of modern paved roads, a slow, soothing voice emanates from a nearby car radio, helpfully explaining this place as a friendly desert town where the sun is hot, the moon is beautiful, and mysterious lights pass overhead while everyone pretends to sleep. Welcome to Night Vale. Oh, oh yeah. Yeah, there's definitely something weird going on here. Because the doorway between worlds has inexplicably vanished and the townsfolk are clamoring to welcome their new citizens while cheerfully explaining that there is no way out. Looks like this is home now. The only problem is it's a goddamn desert and even more inhospitable than the melting iceberg the bears came from. 
There's only one way to make the changes necessary for Night Vale to be livable for its new residents. Run for mayor! Can you sway the citizens of Night Vale? And, more importantly, the machines in Hidden Gorge sending out pulses that actually decide the election, of your plans to deal with Night Vale's most pressing concerns, including the sudden appearance of mysterious glow clouds, the omnipresent threat of the Blood Space War, and the horrors of Street Cleaning Day. <laughs> Can you successfully demonstrate your Night Vale patriotism along with your utter scorn for desert bluffs? Can you prove that you will work well with the city council and the sheriff's secret police? And most importantly, can you survive the faceless old woman who secretly lives in your home? And of course, Hiram McDaniels, who is literally a five-headed dragon. Improvised campaign ads are optional, but encouraged. Just remember whatever you do, do not approach the dog park. <laughs> <laughs> we will start with Sub Zero. Liz, do you have any idea what any of that means? <laughs> uh, since I, I don't listen to Night Vale, but I do know of it, uh, it doesn't matter because I'm going to do whatever the hell I want because that's what usually happens. You're running for mayor. That's all that matters. Yeah. And so my rise to mayor is going to be quite interesting. Do we have access to our cold powers? Absolutely. Okay. Well, I'm just going to live dangerously and say. Sub-Zero doesn't even need his cold powers for this because he's going to embrace his new desert town and he's going to become a professional bathing suit model. And that's how he's going to rise to the mayor's <laughs> office. Because if you, uh, <laughs> let's revisit Mortal Kombat 10 when he takes off, you know, he's got his rippling pecs and his amazing abs and he's got a beautiful sure. beard. And so what he's going to do is he's just going to impress everyone, like peacocking everywhere, like, oh yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm the man. And so just everywhere he's going to be billboards of him in his washboard body in his amazing bathing suit. And he's just going to pull a Zoolander on everyone and he's just going to unite all the people under this super beautiful person with his, yeah, with his awesome bathing suit. And he's going to be melting uh, panties now. And he's going to bring everyone together. <laughs> People are going to be like, oh, yeah, like, he can handle, he can fight this dragon, you know, because everyone's just going to be seeing his muscle-bound body. Like, yeah, yeah, you send him at him. And people are just going to start loving him. And he's going to be elected mayor because he's clearly the most qualified person. He's already led a huge clan. No reason he can't do it with a town. Is it sad that I think this could totally work in America? Yeah. <laughs> I, I was thinking his slogan, because I keep thinking I'm Sub-Zero, I'd be low-hanging Logan. Oh, but that's gosh. not appropriate. <laughs> <laughs> and also, I don't have a dick, so there's that. Uh, but anyways, <laughs> it would be... Oh, low-hanging... Low uh, shit, what's his last uh, name in Chinese? Uh, low-hanging Lang. Yeah, there you go, low-hanging Lang. It's gonna be beautiful. Low Hang Lang? Low Hang Lang. Low Hang Logan. Isn't I'll that a be guy his... from Big Trouble in Little I China? I was just gonna say that. Nice. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> there you go. It's gonna be the best. Okay. It is Elsa's turn for the lightning round and the mayoral race of Night Vale. Um, Alright. Uh, Elsa is very confused, but uh, <laughs> looking around, she realizes what she can best bring to this desert community. Um, if Las Cruces, New Mexico is any indication, <laughs> little desert towns are seriously hurting for entertainment, especially <laughs> the awesome winter variety. Um, she's going to bring a lot of uh, new business into this city, uh, making the days a lot cooler, ice skating parks. But don't worry, I know deserts get really cold at night, so at night the ice will go away, except for, for some of the pocketed winter activities. Um, as for the occasional really creepy monster. I mean, unless unless these people want to keep those around. I mean, it's kind of part of their thing, right? Um, except for that old woman. Oh my gosh, she scares the shit out of me. The con <laughs> oh, the scary concept. Oh, I can't even think about it. I'm not going to be able to sleep tonight, y'all. <laughs> I mean, she can get rid of those easy peasy. All right. Uh, was, Iceman. I don't know if you want a slogan, because I don't got one. <laughs> um, okay, so Night Vale is a city of tradition. Uh, it's a city where people are used to, you know, looking the other way of accepting these sort of horrific things that happen to them regularly of uh, inscrutable uh, orders and laws that come down from the sheriff's secret police that tell them what they can and can't do. But Iceman, he's an X-Man. 
he's used to being a revolutionary. And his whole campaign is going to be built around blowing the minds of Night Vale and forcing them to see that they can have a better life. Now, in terms of his, uh, his two mayoral candidate opponents, first of all, Iceman knows an awful lot about dragons, having lived with Lockheed for as long as he has, and having shared a universe with Vin Fang Foom. He knows an <laughs> awful lot about uh, women with questionable faces because he used to date Mystique. Uh, oh. Iceman can create mountains, which no one in Night Vale believes in, so that'll blow their minds right away. Uh, he can tell them about angels who are not named Erica, but are named Warren. Again, minds blown. And uh, on top of all this, he's going to have the support of the local talk radio, because uh, the host of the local talk show, Cecil Palmer, uh, Obviously, he is in a monogamous relationship with, uh, and a very devoted relationship with uh, his boyfriend, Carlos. But look, Cecil has two eyes and a heart. He, he knows a, uh, a cute, charming guy when he sees him. And Cecil will be quick to throw his support behind Iceman as well. But most importantly, once all this talk of revolution gets behind him, who will rise up from the shadows to support him? Why, it's Tamika Flynn, fresh from slaying librarians. She will join him, and with her, with her behind him, with her by his side, he will rise to the seat of power in Night Vale on a swell of ice and on an ice sled that utterly defies physics. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Finally, Ice King. Okay, okay. That was, that was a bunch of nonsense. I'm sorry. If there's one person who's completely absurd, insane ramblings fit in perfectly in Night Vale, it is clearly the Ice King. If random quotes from Adventure Time more closely match random quotes from Night Vale than I think any other of these characters in their world. So I think he'll be right at home with the completely nonsensical logic of this place. I think that um, if anyone is going to be charming Cecil, it is obviously going to be the Ice King because first, um, on his first day in Night Vale, Telly the Barber is going to assault the Ice King, attempting to remove his triumphant beard and um, oh no yeah but but the uh the ice Fuck you telly i know <laughs> the ice king will of course you know pound him into submission with his beard and freeze him in ice and that will immediately charm cecil who of course we all know hates telly for taking away carlos's beautiful long hair <laughs> um then the ice king will come to further prominence on cecil's radio show when his band's uh songs are featured in the weather where we get to see you know Ice King delivering a sick uh, drum solo. Uh, his <laughs> his album will then start getting carried at Dark Owl Records and become an immediate hit. And when he starts running for mayor, I mean, who were the two previous candidates? We had the faceless old woman who secretly lives in no, your home no, and no. Uh, Hiram McDaniels, who's literally a five-headed dragon. Two characters that are basically supervillains. And who is the clearest supervillain here? It's the Ice King. And as we've shown, if Cecil likes anything, it is a benevolent yet totally all-controlling and uh, dictatorial tyrant government that like you know is super paranoid and who's a super paranoid tyrant the ice king it's perfect <laughs> all right excellent well oh, you have to be pretty cold-blooded to make this decision guys i'm gonna be honest uh, oh, oh it's a you're problem. lucky there's not more shut up <laughs> <laughs> we did front load a lot of puns in i'm, I'm not gonna yeah, lie that's very true I have to, to go think about this in my um, icy fortress of solitude and maybe, you know, use the force to get my lightsaber back while I'm there. And, uh, you know, other igloo-related uh, locational jokes. Uh, insert them as you will. Ice. Anyway, <laughs> talk Have an ice yourself. time, Miles. <laughs> making your decision. <laughs> Buy <Bye>, ice hole. <laughs> So, um, uh, has anyone else had Foreigner's song Cold as Ice stuck in their head, like, the whole time? I think that's just you. I've had a daisy chain of Arnold Schwarzenegger quotes going through my head the whole time. Ah! Shame that Mr. Freeze didn't make the cut, but yeah. he, was, he was close. It's alright, he was clearly here in spirit. Yeah, yeah. Yes, indeed. There's one point I wish I had the, the room to make. I mm. argue that the bears will naturally favor Elsa. <laughs> oh, as we as we learned from uh, the Gameable podcast about how uh, princesses and or orphans have the ability to speak to animals, yeah, but okay. she's not an orphan. I mean, she she grew up with her parents and everything, and she was fine. Or, or did they? When did they die? No, they, no, we, they, they were pretty they, young. Like yeah. five minutes into the movie, <laughs> it's shipwreck city. <laughs> we see that there's an animal there. There's the the reindeer thing, and I don't think any of them are able to talk to it. 
Sven really likes Anna. Doesn't really get a chance to meet Elsa too much. Maybe but... Sven's just not talkative, you know? Yeah. Maybe uh, maybe Kristoff just uh, does all the talking for him, so he uh, he never feels the need to. Or is this going to be like Elsa's the thing they said bitch. with the... With the great mouse detective, where the what their explanation was that the one dog was mute. Yeah, that's exactly. why I didn't talk. What did you say, Liz? Nothing. Ice. <laughs> I said ice. <laughs> <laughs> it was very interesting that we had comic book character, a movie character, a video game character, a TV show character, and then our setting was a movie, and the lightning round was a podcast. Well, no, the the setting yeah, was a awesome. book. Oh, a book. Sorry. Yeah. I, yeah. I think of it as a movie. It was a book. You're right. I apologize. That's pretty perfect. I think we just achieved some sort of high score. Does discussing foreigners cold as ice bring in music? <laughs> oh, God. Any plays we can bring into this? Uh, well, we Winter's did sing Tale. Let It Go. Yeah. That's you true. You just want to sing Let It Go. <laughs> let I it mean, go, Liz. No. <laughs> it would be bad. I was hoping you were going to continue the song. <laughs> let it go. Oh, no. <laughs> it's no highway star. That perfect girl is gone. Here I... No. Stop. Stop. <laughs> It's like crack. You can't just put yeah. it down. That's what they say about crack. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I'm picturing. I'm picturing a billboard. Try crack. Wait, isn't you just crack can't put it down. You just <laughs> can't let it go. <laughs> isn't the slang name for crack also ice? Isn't that meth? meth. Oh, it's that's meth. meth. I'm sorry. You're right. Jeez, what kind I'm of a drug addict are you, kid? <laughs> if it doesn't basically give you animal powers, you don't want anything to do with it. Nope. What gives you animal powers? Well, crocodile. Crocodile for what? Has, but has only a kid been huffing mutagen. <laughs> She uh. just ground up Vixen's amulet and has been snorting it. I know a guy. Hypothetical question. If you could do any fictional drug, which one would you do? I'd probably go with mutant growth hormone. It's from Marvel. It gives you superpowers. Yeah, there you mm. go. That's the one. Why would you do anything else? Yeah. There's Blight from Captain Planet. Oh, uh, gosh. I'm good. You could do Spice from Dune, and then, like, yeah. you can see the future or something. Mm. Oh, why do I want to see the future? <laughs> How does, like, the red dust or red sand or whatever work in Mass Effect? Do you have to be a biotic in order to get the powers, or can you just, like, get biotic powers if you do it, if you're not already? Oh, done? yeah, yeah. That's what I do. Yeah. Mm -hmm. No. Well, this is already a pretty powerful biotic, so, you know, right. <laughs> I, I shudder to think of what she could do with that. Yeah, yep, yep, that's me. Was I about to reach for it, and then Liz just took it away and snorted it and <laughs> became a biotic god? <laughs> well, you were just asking <laughs> Jesus <laughs> Christ, I'm gone for five minutes. <laughs> doing drugs. Yep. We're doing fictional drugs. What the fuck? <laughs> They're fictional? I learned <laughs> it from you, Miles. <laughs> then why do I have heat vision? All right, I have returned. I have uh, unthawed. And uh, come out so, of cryogenic suspension like the... fucking Captain ah! America. This was difficult. I really liked Kit's story a lot. <laughs> I thought that was really fun, and I appreciate it. Uh, yeah, I knew I, think, I was not going to win. <laughs> I, I, I think Colin ran away with the lightning round on this one. <laughs> <laughs> Just absolutely excellent uh, points during that particular segment, so... Colin, you are, at the very least, the lightning round winner. Yay! Uh, the Ice King, moving forward for the people who are tracking <laughs> Smash Fiction continuity, the Ice King is the mayor of Night Vale. <laughs> <laughs> the Ice King is the mayor of Night Vale. <laughs> Write it down. Liz, I want to pick you so bad because I want to pick Sub-Zero so bad because you made me laugh so much <laughs> in your opening argument. It was so good, and I really appreciate the line about the bears and the beard. However, I would have to go with Iceman. But, that would mean giving a win to Dan. No one wants and that. I can't, <laughs> I can't give a win to Dan. So, the winner of this match is Mr. Freeze. Congratulations. <laughs> oh, yes. What a twist! <laughs> what have we done, guys? <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. Dan wins. All Congratulations. Right. Miles, I'm, I have to say, I had money riding on you making a Da Bears reference at some oh, point yeah. in this match, you and I am me. shocked that you did not. You it's weird. It's like the Super Bowl happens, football season ends, and it all just goes out of my <laughs> yes. head. It's like, I don't know what's going on there. <laughs> anyway, comics are broken, man. What yeah. can I say, guys? Yeah. That, that, that's all, you know. That, that's all I can say about that. I didn't know half that shit about Iceman. <laughs> oh, dude. That's why I wrote my story. I was like, I can't beat him. <laughs> Thank you for listening to this week's episode of Smash Fiction. Next week, Judge Dredd versus V. Ice. <laughs> <laughs>
Special thanks to Kevin McLeod for our theme song, which is called Hitman. You can find his work at www.incompetech.com. You can follow the Smash Fiction Podcast on Twitter at Smash Fic Podcast and search for us on Facebook and Tumblr. Subscribe on iTunes, and if you leave us a good review, we shall become more powerful than you can possibly imagine. If you have any suggestions, feedback, or other contributions, send them to us at smashfictionpodcast at gmail.com and help us continue the fight. 